This is a follow-up video on the last one. I feel led to do this in Jesus' name, and this is for the glory of Jesus Christ, because there's nothing that I can do that makes me good, because there's nothing good in me but Jesus that's within me, in Jesus' name. I didn't plan for this to happen. I did not. When I came back home from work, I wasn't going to speak to anybody. I was just going to go into my cabin, worship the Lord, and then get on a Zoom meeting with some other believers that operate in the Spirit of God. We just asked the Holy Spirit to come in and have His way, and He has His way, and people get healed, and demons get cast out, and the Word of God is taught in spirit and in truth and not in flesh, praise God. So there's a man, he's drinking a beer. I've been through all that. Alcohol, drugs, sex, gone back many times. I should be in hell right now for turning back so many times, but God has forgiven me. So anyway, my last video was about the fact that a lot of you feel like you're not doing enough for God. That's the devil. Making you feel like you're not doing enough. Trying to make you earn God's grace and favor and approval. When you gained that, when he died on the cross for you and forgave you of your sins. Did he call you to turn away from your sins? Yes, and we can't play with God and I've done it myself and I'm guilty. So this message is for me too. No more lukewarmness. But when you make a decision to follow Christ, stuff like what I'm about to tell you will happen. You wake up in the morning, you ask for God's Spirit to use you. You give Him your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears, your mind. You allow Him to move through you, literally, if He wants to move through you. In Jesus' name, if He wants to speak to the point where it's not me speaking anymore, it's Him speaking, He will. I get home from work today, drinking a beer. I've talked to him before about God, and he was open to it. God's drawing him in. He confesses to me that since I talked to you, my entire family has changed. It's only been two weeks. This is a miracle. It has nothing to do with me, and I told him that. I was shocked myself. I said, wow, praise God. I said, that's awesome, man. He said, yeah, I got a relationship with my family now. But I feel like my girlfriend's holding me back. And whenever you come over here, she's wanting to fight with me and getting crazy with me. I said, brother, those are spirits. Those unclean spirits don't like me talking to you because unclean spirits can recognize the Holy Spirit and that I am talking to you about God. And he started to recognize that and recognize certain things and start to recognize and this is somebody who hasn't given his life to Jesus Christ yet. But he started picking it up. And the Spirit of God was allowing him to see and understand that he was not fighting against his girlfriend. He was fighting against the spirits of Jezebel that was angry with me for talking to him about God and telling him to read the book of Matthew because that's what I heard in my mind when I was talking to him. I'm jumping all over the place from different spots in the conversation with him, but I hope this is helping you. I didn't plan on this happening. I was just willing to be used when I woke up this morning. It happened. This is only the second time we've talked. I said, brother, are you ready to give your life to Christ? Because he wants to forgive you of your sins. And you can be a child of God today. But I told him as well, as the scripture states, Jesus said, what man before he builds a house doesn't count the cost? I said, listen, you're going to be persecuted. People are going to think you're crazy. People are think going to think you're out of your mind. You're going to look like a fool to the rest of the world if you give your life to Christ. But he promises you eternal life and peace and joy. And you've been deceived for a long time with the pleasures of this world. But you've got everything that you need in the spirit of God. And God wants to save you. He said, if I can be sincerely honest, God's working on me and this is working and it's drawing me in, but I'm not ready yet. It's not sincere. That's the most honest answer I've ever heard. He was honest with me, but he was sitting with me for half an hour and didn't know why.
kept saying that he had to go, but something kept pulling him in. Is that me? Does that mean I'm special? Well, God calls all of his children special, fearfully and wonderfully made. But the, does that mean that I am above anybody else or more anointed than this person or that person? God forbid, certainly not, because God is not a respecter of persons. I was just willing to be used, and I laid my life down this morning and presented my body as a living sacrifice unto God, and God used me mightily. can pray for sickness to go away and it'll just go away this man expressed to me because i told him listen if you keep trying to get over a certain sin because he confessed that he wants to stop drinking he wants this that this that he's back and forth with this and that and this and that doesn't know what to do i said brother you're trying to do it on your own god wants you to admit that you're weak and that you need a spirit and when you give your life to Jesus Christ in sincerity and you admit that you're a sinner, because he told me, oh, I'm a good person. I haven't done things that are that bad. I told him all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I said, when you give your life to Christ and ask him to fill you with his spirit, he will change the desire. He will give you the strength. And you'll be free. God wants to set you free. So he wasn't ready tonight to be led in prayer unto Christ. But he said, brother, you can talk to me anytime if you want to uh, come in the morning, if you want to come at night. He's very, very drawn to me because he's not drawn to me. He's drawn to the glory around me, the Holy Spirit in me. Any child of God, anyone listening, any man or woman that wants to be used by God and have the glory of God in them, the Holy Spirit in them, for God to speak out of them. For you to be able to tell sickness and pain to go away in Jesus' name to cast out demons. You need only truly give your all of your life, your dreams, your own aspirations, your own will, your own habits. Give it to him. As soon as you give it to him, he'll fill you with his spirit and he'll deliver you from all unclean spirits. It's not too late. Just come back. God will use you. I didn't ask for this experience. This man is declaring to me. That he wants deliverance. When I was talking about going through uh, sin over and over and over and not being able to uh, overcome it, I said, brother, you just need deliverance. You'll be all right. There's just something that needs to come out. To spirit. He said, well, let's do it right now, man. You pray for me. Let's do it right now. An exorcism, whatever you got going on, man. He didn't know. He... he personality man he, he was silly the way he said it but he believes he just has faith man I said brother if I just cast these things out of you right now because he doesn't know anything but I was telling him and I put it simply to him I said if I just cast these things out right now but you don't know how to fight they might come back and you might give in to those sins again because you don't know how to fight yet you need to have a good foundation and you need to know how to fight before I cast these things out. Because if you go back and forth, and I know this from personal experience, God will deliver you over and over and over again, but you're just shooting yourself in the foot and preventing yourself from being fully used by God in the way that he wants to use you and you're holding up all your blessings is what you're doing when you go back to sin. How do I know that? Because I've done it. And I told him, you need to be rooted in Christ first. I want you to know Christ yourself, not know about him. I want you to be alone in your cabin, brother, and I want you to read Matthew. Because this is about a personal relationship. That's what I told him. I want you to know him, to experience his love and his spirit. And understand the gravity, the weight of what he did for you. And once you give him your whole life and accept him and give your life to Christ and read the word of God so you know how to fight. And I can—I told him I can help you in any, any questions you have or anything, but I want you to read this thing for yourself and have a personal relationship with him when you're ready to give him everything. Then I can pray for you and help you get delivered from these spirits and cast them out because then you'll know how to fight according to the word of God, because that's the sword that you'll fight with. He wasn't ready tonight, but he'll give his life to Christ.